الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد ايها الاحباب تارش of Rahman, the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal, that he rose over as he says all throughout the Quran or rises over, Subhana, is mentioned all throughout the Quran. Istawa al Arsh. And Ahl Sunnah accepts the text from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam without going into detail about those things we have no knowledge of. And always seek to gain benefit and knowledge about those things which are going to bring you benefit. Not those issues. Do not debate. Do not argue. That's against the way of the Salaf of this Ummah. They detested and hated people debating and debating with Ahl Kalam, the people of Kalam, like the uh, Mu'tazila and the Jahmiya and the Asha'ira and all of these various groups who used, who have a tendency to use their intellect to make judgments with regarding uh, the Nasus, regarding the text of the Quran and the Sunnah. To make sure that it fits with their intellect, then they accept it. If it doesn't, then they use ways, either they negate it or they uh, distort the meaning. And this is especially the methodology as far as distorting the meaning of the Asha'ira. Ayul Ahbab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, istawa ala al-arsh, ala arshihi. Ma'ana istawa, istawa Allah ala arshihi, aluihi wa istakrarihi alayhi. So the meaning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rising above his throne is his uh, being over it, aluihi, and being firmly established over it. وصعود وارتفاع وصعود وارتفاع يرجعاني إلى معانا العلو. So the Salaf رحمهم الله تعالى they when they discussed and explain explained when they explained the had uh, tafsir of the term alu what it means alu. Uh, be, you know, being high, being high over something, being over something, and being firmly over something or established, they also uh, referred to, in, in the tafsir of istoa, referred to, you know, to, to raise up or be high up. These were the various ways in which the Salaf of this Ummah explained and had tafsir over what it meant istawa, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, rose above his throne in a manner that suits his majesty, subhanahu. Wadilil qawluhu ta'ala, and the evidence that Allah rose above his throne, there's evidence for this. Ar-Rahman ala ars istawa, the most merciful rose above his throne. In Surah Al-Taha. وَقَدْ ذَكَرَ فِي سَبْعَ مَوَادِعْ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ فِي سُورَةِ الْإِعْرَافِ وَيُونِسِ وَرَعْدِ وَطَاهَ وَفِرْقَانِ وَتَنْزِيلَ سَجْدَ وَالْحَدِيدِ So in seven places in the Quran, Allah mentions that He rose above His throne. And those were the various places in the Quran. In Surah Al-A'raf, Surah Al-Yunis, Surah Al-Ra'ad, Surah Al-Taha, uh, Surah Al-Furqan, Surah Al-Sajda, Surah Al-Hadid. All of these surahs affirm for us in seven places in the Quran that Allah rose above His throne. So how is it we can deny that? How is it we can change the meaning? Because it fits our intellect better. It makes us feel better in our hearts. We feel more comforted. But instead, Ahl Sunnah, Fi Taslim Fi Qulubihim. Ahl Sunnah, they are, they are, they accept the text. They accept it, and they know that Allah rose above the throne in a manner that suits His Majesty, 
We don't know how, and we don't go into that. That which we have no knowledge of, and that which has no benefit for us. It's not going to help you pray your Fajr prayer on time. It's not going to help you leave the sins knowing the kafia, the how. That's not going to help you practice your five daily prayers. It's not going to help you be better, uh, a better neighbor and better with your brothers and sisters or a better father or a better son or a better daughter or a better husband or wife or whatever. That's not going to help you in your ibadah knowing in-depth knowledge that Allah did not give us that knowledge of. وَرَدْ عَلَى مَنْ فَسَرُهُ so here's three points which refutes the statement of the Isha'ira especially with regards to uh, their explanation of uh, Ar-Rahman ala ar Because they refer, they make ta'wil, they change the actual where Allah says Ar-Rahman ala ar istawa Istawa in Arabic, it's spelled with a alif. A seen, a ta, a wow, and a ya, or a uh, alif miftuha, uh, istawa. But the asha'ira, they actually hear this is one of the forms of ta'wil. This is the ta'wil where the actual uh, text or the word itself is changed, not just in meaning, but also in the actual text itself. So not linguistically alone, but also in the text itself. So they explain istoa to mean istola or istila, meaning to take something by force. And that is spelled, that uh, explanation that they give actually changes the form of the word into another word. It's alif, sin, ta, ya, lem, alif, and uh, uh, hamza. That changes the whole the word. The word we're talking about, istoa, that Allah mentions in the Quran in several places, is istoa. Alif, sin, ta, wow, uh, alif. So, there are three ways in which, are three benefits that we can gain in refuting their understanding here. The first being, أَنَّهُ خِلَافْ ظَهْرَ nas is that first and foremost, their explanation that Allah took the throne by force or whatever they imply by that, it goes against the apparent meaning of the text of the Quran. The Quran, there's no, they have no evidence for that. That is in accordance with their understanding and their changing of the word. But istoa does not mean that. The second way in which we deal with this that also it differs with the way in which the Salaf of this Ummah, meaning the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, with Tabi'a Tabi'een, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een ala Sahaba, wa rahimahumullah jami'an, the way they explained istawa, so their tafsir, so that means the Asha'ira and these other groups which came later, all of a sudden they have their own tafsir, a tafsir that goes against Mujahid and, and those great uh, Mufassirin and, and, and of course before him Ibn Abbas and their students from the Tabi'een and, and all those Mufassirin of the, uh, of the Quran. So they differ with, their, with the explanation of the Salaf. Number three, the third way in which they um, uh, differ with Ahl Sunnah in their Tafsir and, and we can deal with or refute their Tafsir here, أَنَّهُ يَلْزِمْ عَلَيْهِ لَوَازِمْ بَاطِلًا That their inferences, those things which they infer from the text, uh, is in accordance with their inferences. But it doesn't, it's not necess necessitated the meaning that they infer by the text, by the Quran. So when we say, Ar-Rahman al ars istawa that the most merciful rose above his throne, or rises above his throne, his stoa, that does not, uh, that does not necessitate that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above his throne, that his rising is like 
his creations rising. No, that doesn't necessitate that. There is nothing comparable or like unto him, and he is the all-hearing and the all-seeing. So Allah possesses hearing and sight. We possess hearing and sight, but our hearing and sight is not a lot like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's. We're imperfect. Our hearing and sight is limited. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect and camel in his sifat. And so it does not necessitate what they necessitate that is a resemblance between rising of the throne and, for example, me rising out of this chair. That is falsehood. That is batil to make that inference there. That is according to their intellect instead of dealing with the nasus and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about himself and what the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And one last point we want to mention here regarding the language. Well, arsh lughatan. So in the Arabic language, al-arsh, what's the meaning of arsh? Sarir al-mulk al-malak al-khasbi. So the arsh in the Arabic language, it is a like a, a bed which is specially, specifically for a king. It's, that's what it's known in the Arabic language when we hear, when the term in, in the Arabic language, when it's not referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's arsh, it is referring in the, in the language, linguistically, to uh, basically a throne which uh, a king sits upon. Wushar'an, and according as an Islamic term, ما أستوى الله عليه وهو من أعظم مخلوقات الله. This is very important. So as a Sharia term, uh, the Arsh, Al-Arsh, refers to that which Allah uh, rose above. And it is one of his great, greatest. وهو من أعظم مخلوقات الله. And it is one of the greatest uh, creations of Allah. So the fact that the throne is from the makhlukat and Allah is above it lets us know the throne is not a characteristic of Allah and the throne is so it's not uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's created and that which is created will will be destroyed but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who awalu wal akhiru He's the first and he's the last, and he will never be destroyed. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yuhi wa yumit. He gives life and he gives death. But he will not die. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al Hayyu al Qayyum. That's who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. But the Arsh is the greatest creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or from the greatest creations. Uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bel a'vam ma alamna minha. Rather, it is the greatest from what uh, we have learned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has taught us from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's one of the, the greatest creations. Fakad ja'ana nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ennahu qal. And so in a hadith that was narrated on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qal, ما سموات يسبع وأرضون سبع بنسبة إلى الكرسي إلا كالحلقة أوقيت في فلات من الأرض وإن فضل العرش على الكرسي كفضل فلات على على تلك حلقة. In this hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said. The seven heavens and seven earths uh, cannot compare to the kursi. The kursi meaning the footstool of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the mufassirin explain. That the kursi, when we say like in ayat al-kursi, is referring to the footstool of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the seven heavens and seven earths connect, uh, cannot compare to the kursi or the footstool except like a plot of land dropped in the desert or that meets the desert. The superiority of the arsh, of the throne, over the footstool, meaning the kursi, is like the superiority of the desert over the area 
uh, the desert or, or the open area over th that plot of land. So showing us, Ayul Ahbab, that what we, one of the benefits we gain there is that the Arsh is something created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's one of the greatest creations of Allah Azza wa Jal. And meaning that it, since it was created, it is not a part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we can't explain it away and give it a new tafsir, which was not known to the Salaf of this Ummah. And another last benefit is that we should never get too engrossed in a lot of these very detailed issues like this. And leave that for the ulama and the students of knowledge that perhaps they can deal with the shubahat or the doubtfulness of Ahl bidah when these things come up from Ashadis and so forth. But for us to get in these debates and argue with these people, especially if you don't have the tools and the knowledge to deal with it, then it can either get you confused or lost, so you should avoid it. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan.